For you know that you were not redeemed. For you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold that were passed down to you by vain tradition from your fathers, from the worthless way of living passed it down to you by your fathers. But you were redeemed by the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. I want to tell you that little story. And again, this is not my story. This is one of Reinhardt's stories, but will you indulge me? And this is a story that Reinhardt told hundreds and hundreds of times in Africa. It was my favorite. And it was the story about a, a very wealthy man. He was um, the owner of a, a mansion and the mansion had 10 rooms, five rooms on the top and five rooms on the bottom. And one day, this is a parable, okay? You understand that? Okay, I don't want you to think I'm trying to pass this off as a true story. This is a parable. Jesus told parables so we can too. So one day there's a knocking at the door. And the man answers the door. And who's standing there? It's Jesus. He's shining like the sun. And when the men saw Jesus, he said, oh, Jesus, please come into my house. Lord, I've heard such amazing things about you. I've heard how you save people, how you forgive people, how you wash people, how you break their chains, how you set them free, how you bless every area of their lives. He said, Lord, I need you in my life. I want you to be my guest. And he said, Lord, if you'll come into my house, if you'll be my guest, I'll do something very special for you. I'll give you the very best room in my house. It's a room upstairs. It's the master bedroom. It has the biggest walk-in shower. It's got the, the biggest panoramic view out the window. It's the biggest, it's the best, and it's yours if you want it. And of course, Jesus is a gentleman, so he accepted the offer. He said, thank you very much. He came inside, he went upstairs, and that man was very happy. He thought he had done something wonderful. But that night, there was another knock at the door. And this was not a gentle knocking. This was a terrible knocking. And when the man heard the knocking on the door, he wondered, who could it be this time of night? But he thought, I should probably just look outside and see who it is. And so he cracked the door and he looked outside. And do you know who was standing there? <laughs> it was the devil. And when the man saw the devil, he said, oh no, devil, I don't want you in my house. I've heard about what you do to people, how you torment them, how you bind them with addictions and with fears and tears. He said, I don't want you in my house. And he tried to shut the door. But you know, the devil had already put one little toe inside the door. And this is always the way the devil works. You might think you're getting away with cracking the door open for the devil, but all he needs is one toe. And soon he's put his knee in the door. And then he puts his elbow in the door. And then he puts his shoulder in the door. And soon the devil had burst his way into that man's house. And the man was fighting with him, struggling through the night. But he was no match for the devil. The devil tormented him from the evening to the dawn of the next day and finally the next day as the sun was rising the devil slipped out the back door and went away and just about that time Jesus came down from upstairs and when the man saw Jesus he suddenly remembered that Jesus was there he said Lord I forgot about you you were my guest you stayed in my master bedroom last night he said Lord wait a minute why didn't you help me why didn't you come down? You could have defeated the devil. And Jesus said, well, sir, he said, thank you for giving me this beautiful room in your house. But he said, sir, there are 10 rooms in this house. You've given me one. The other nine still belong to you. The man said, well, Lord, that makes perfect sense. He said, Lord, I'm going to fix this right away. Here's what I'm going to do for you, Lord. As of this moment... I'm going to split my house with you 50-50. Five rooms on the top for you, five rooms on the bottom for me. Jesus is a gentleman. He said, thank you very much. He took the keys and he went upstairs. And that night, do you know what happened? Another knock. And when the man looked outside, do you know who was standing there? You guys are going to have to play along a little better than this. It was the devil again. And do you know what happened? 
The devil broke in and tormented that man through the night, pouring filthy temptations over him. And the man struggled with all of his might, but he was no match for the devil. And finally, early the next morning, as the sun was rising, the devil slipped out the back door and disappeared. And just about that time, Jesus came down. And this time, when the man saw Jesus, he got angry. He said, Jesus, what is wrong with you? I have been more than generous. I've given you five of the ten rooms in my house, including the very best room, and still you do nothing to help me. Jesus said, sir, please calm down, calm down. He said, yes, it's true. You gave me five rooms, but the other five rooms belong to you. Oh, yes, the man said. You're right, you're right. I'm sorry, Lord. He said, this is what I'll do, Lord. As of this moment, I'm going to give you all the rooms in my house except the one where I sleep. Nine rooms for you, one room for me. He said, you know, Lord, there's some things in that one room that are very personal. They're very private. He said, Lord, I wouldn't want you seeing them. I wouldn't want you looking at them. He said, Lord, I have things in there that are adult things. Don't you love the euphemisms we use? They're grown-up things. He said, Lord, you can have all the other rooms, nine rooms you can have, and I will just keep one room for myself. Well, Jesus is a gentleman. He said, thank you very much. He went upstairs, and you know what happened? That night, another terrible knocking at the door. And do you know who was there? It was the devil. You're doing great. You've got a long way to go to be as good as Africans, but you're doing good. It was the devil again, and the devil broke in and tormented that man through the night. And finally, early the next morning, as the sun was rising, the devil slipped out the back door and disappeared. Just about that time, Jesus came down. And this time, when the man saw Jesus, he began to cry. <laughs> He cried like some of you cry at the altar in your church every week. He said, Lord, don't you love me? Why won't you help me? I've given you so much of my house. I've given you nine rooms. Jesus put his arm around that man and he said, sir. He said, let me help you. Yes, it's true, you've given me nine of the rooms in this house, but sir, you own this house. The title deed is in your name. And if you are the owner of this house, you must also be the protector of this house. You must also be the provider for this house. You are the master and I am your guest. The Lord said, sir, let me give you some advice. Instead of inviting me to live in your house, give your house to me, and I will invite you to live in my house. And in that moment, it was like a veil lifted. It was like the light went on, like it's going to go on for some of you right now. And suddenly that man realized that he had invited Jesus in, but only as a guest, even if an honored one that his heart and his life had not truly been given to the Lord. He reached into his pocket, he pulled out the keys, he handed that big clump of keys to Jesus. He said, Lord, here, take it, it's yours. Every room is yours, every door is yours, every bedroom, every blade of grass, every window, everything is yours, the good and the bad. It all belongs to you, Lord Jesus. And Jesus is a gentleman. He said, thank you very much. He took the keys. He went upstairs. And that night, do you know what happened? And when that man heard the knocking on the door, his knees began knocking. And his hands began trembling because he knew what was about to happen. Cold sweat was coming down his face because he knew he had been through this so many times before. He would open that door almost as if he couldn't control it. 
The devil would come in again and the devil would torment him through the night again, pouring filthy temptations over him, binding him with fears and tears and addictions and compulsions. And his trembling hand was reaching for that doorknob when suddenly he felt something. There was a tap on his shoulder and he turned around. And do you know who was standing back there? It was Jesus. He was shining like the sun. He said, sir, please excuse me. I believe this house belongs to me. Get out of the way. I will answer the door. Hallelujah. And Jesus didn't peek out to see who was there. Oh, no. Jesus isn't afraid of anybody. He threw that door open. He said, who's there? And do you know who was there? It was the devil. But when the devil saw Jesus, it was not the person he had been expecting. He looked very confused. He looked at the number on the house. And then he looked at Jesus. And something wasn't adding up. He looked at the number again. Jesus, number, Jesus, number, Jesus, number, Jesus. And so very carefully he backed away from the door. And he bowed himself to the ground. And this is what he said. Excuse me, sir. I've come to the wrong house. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what's going to happen tonight. Jesus redeemed you by his blood. Jesus paid the price for your sins. More than silver, more than gold, more than dollars, more than euro. And this is what's going to happen tonight. Listen to me. Tonight, you're going to give him your life. Not, not 10%, not 50%, not 90%. But 100%, he will be your master. He will be your Lord. He will be your Savior. And you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Would you stand all over this place? Musicians, come back, please. The holy moment of this night has come. I'm aware that there are many of you here tonight who you love the Lord. You do. And you want to serve him. But if you're honest with yourself, don't come forward yet, please. Just wait. Just wait. I want to make sure you're coming forward for the right reasons. Because this is, this is very serious. This is life and death right now. If you're really honest with yourself, you would say, I love Jesus, but I've not surrendered my life to him. My friend, listen to me. Jesus has no desire just to be your buddy. Jesus has no desire just to hang out with you. You don't get to have him just by wearing a cross around your neck or even by buying a Jesus image shirt. That won't do it for you. As great as that is. Jesus is not on social media. You don't just get to like him. He didn't say like me. And when he said follow me, he didn't mean on the internet. He meant lay down your life. Get on the cross with me. That's what he's asking you for tonight. With every head bowed and every eye closed, this is what I want to ask you. If you would say, Daniel, I am not sure tonight that I've truly surrendered my life to Jesus. And I'm not sure that I've truly been redeemed by his blood. And tonight, I want to get my life right. Tonight, I want to do business with God. I want to make him not just my friend, but my Lord, my master, my everything. And from this day forward, I'm going to live for him. It's a radical call that I'm giving you tonight. This is not just... Raise your hand if you like Jesus. It's raise your hand if you are ready to lay down your life, if you're ready to stop walking with one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom, if you're ready to stop playing games, if you want to give him everything. I want to see your hand tonight, and I want to pray for you. 
Come on, those of you, if you, if you need to surrender your life to Jesus, come forward right now. Come on. This is serious. Thank you, Jesus. This is the gospel. If a man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. For those of you that are not coming forward, I want you to begin to intercede. You either need to be down here or you need to be praying for the ones that are. Because this is a serious moment. Some of you that are coming forward, you've tried everything. You've tried medications, you've tried counselors, you've tried discipline. You've done everything you knew how to do and still you've fallen short. There's one thing you haven't done yet. You haven't surrendered. It's time to surrender. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, I sense the presence of the Lord here in such a wonderful way. I told you the Holy Spirit lingers at the foot of the cross. For you are not redeemed by corruptible things like silver and gold, but you are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Here's what's going to happen for those of you that are coming forward. I'm going to lead you now in a prayer. We call this the prayer of salvation. But I'm going to call it tonight the prayer of surrender. Because here's the reality. Jesus already shed his blood. It's not as though when you come here, he sheds his blood for you. Again, the work is already done. The offer has already been made. But now it's your job to come by faith, to lay down everything in your hands and to receive that glorious salvation. And so I'm going to lead you in this prayer now, but I want you to understand. And those of you that are coming, please continue to come. There's plenty of room here in the front. Do me a favor, and those of you that are coming forward, go to the sides to make room for those that are coming. Don't stop in the aisles, because we need all the room that we can get. This prayer that I'm going to lead you in now is not some religious liturgy. It's not some formality. In fact, it's not coming out of a prayer book. It's not even coming out of the Bible itself. I'm literally going to make it up off the top of my head as we go. And I'm going to ask you to pray with me. And maybe you say, Daniel, why should I pray a prayer that you made up? And here's why. It's because it's not the words that save you. Jesus doesn't speak English. He doesn't speak Spanish. He doesn't speak Portuguese or whatever language it is that's your mother tongue. He speaks one language. It's called heart. He's listening to your heart. He's listening to the cry of your heart. And when it says that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, it's talking about the cry of your heart. And so tonight, all that I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to help you to put language to what ought to already be the cry of your heart. But don't just repeat empty words from an empty head. Pray this out of the depths of your heart and you have God's promise that he will hear and he will answer. Before I pray, I just have this nagging feeling in my heart that there's some of you that need to be down here that aren't. And especially, I, I keep hearing this, this word prodigal, 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 prodigal. There are prodigal children. Some of you that are, that are listening to me right now, maybe you're watching online, maybe you're sitting in your living room, maybe you're driving down the road listening to this. Don't get in a wreck, but listen. When Jesus calls you, do not take that lightly. 
Some of you are feeling even now like a palpitation in your heart. The, the temperature of your body is going up. You're like, what's happening? That's the Lord speaking to you. And don't take that for granted. That does not happen every day. That's why it says in Hebrews, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart because my friend, you may never hear that voice again. If he's calling to you, now's the moment. And maybe you say, Daniel, you don't understand. If you knew the things that were in that bedroom, if you knew those things that you're asking me to surrender, you would say, I'm a hopeless case. But my friend, listen, Jesus said he didn't come for the righteous, but he came to call sinners to repentance. And tonight, if you will humble yourself, the Bible says he gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. So here's what's going to happen right now. Prodigal son, prodigal daughter. You've been away from God. Tonight's your night. Now is your time. How many of you know that verse that says, today is the day of salvation? How many of you know that one? Trick question. That's not in the Bible. Go look at it. It doesn't say today is the day of salvation. It says now, now, now is the day of salvation. Because you can't wait for one more day. You don't have 24 hours. Your next breath is not promised to you. All you have is this moment. So give it to Jesus. Let him save you and let him touch you. Here's what we're going to do right now. In just a moment, I'm going to ask every person in this room to turn to the one on their right and on their left. And you're going to ask this question. Do you need to be down at that altar? And if they say yes, you're going to take them by the hand and bring them. Do it right now. Turn to the one on your right and your left. I don't care if they're the nicest looking person here. I don't care if they're a pastor. I don't care if they sing on the worship team. Ask them, do you need to be at that altar? And if they say yes, take them by the hand and bring them. And come stand here before the Lord. Come on, let's put our hands together for those that are coming. You are so welcome. You're so welcome. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, for every one of you that are coming down right now, and every one of you that are here in the front, this whole conference was worth it just for you. For every one of you. Because I believe with all my heart that's what it, what's going to happen over the next two minutes is that the Holy Spirit is going to come to fill you and to live inside of you. And you are going to be transformed from the inside out. You are going to be, listen to me, immersed into God himself. You cannot be the same. So I want everybody here at the altar, actually just stand. Come on, I want you all to stand. If you can, if you can't stand, don't worry, I understand. Those of you that can stand, stand. And I want you to lift your hands. We're going to pray this together. And actually, I'm going to ask everybody in this room to lift your hands. And I want everybody to pray with me in support of those that are praying for the first time. Are you ready? Do not whisper this. I want you to shout it out from the depths of your heart. Are you ready? Yeah. Say, Dear Lord Jesus Christ, Dear Lord Jesus Christ I, come to you tonight, I come to you tonight, a sinner. Needing salvation. Need salvation. Lord, Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ. Son of the living God. Of the living God. Have, mercy Have mercy on me. Save me now. I surrender my life. Every room in my heart. And I confess with my mouth. Would I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Jesus is my Savior, that Jesus is the Son of God, and as of this night, I surrender all in the name of Jesus. From this night forward, I belong to Jesus. And Jesus belongs to me. I believe it. I receive it. And I confess it. In the name of Jesus. 
And everybody said, amen, amen. Come on, give a shout to Jesus. Thank you, Lord.